opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Welcome to The Rock Talk Show. I'm your host, Phil Trelawski. We talk to the people on stage and behind the scenes in the music and entertainment business. Today, we have a special guest, as always. They're all special. But some call him a local working class hero. And this one I like the best, this quote. The uh, Bruce Springsteen of the Prairies. Welcome, Greg McPherson. Hey, Phil. Nice and to his, see you. And his drummer, Rob Gardner. Hey, thanks, thanks for doing the show. So, Fireball, new album. Yep. Just released it. Uh, talk about that. Six albums? Yeah, this is our sixth record. My first one was a cassette that I don't usually tell people about, but oh. I think my, my uh, full-length studio albums, this is the sixth one. And when you say cassette, we're talking, you've been around for a while now. Yeah, I've been around a little while, yeah. A little while. I was, you know, I was a preteen, of course, when I, when I did it. I was only about 13 years old. I'm just kidding. I was <laughs> about 25. But yeah, I put my first uh, record out on cassette in 1997. And then after that, CD format until the last couple have been on, on everything, vinyl and MP3 and, you know. So how do you feel? Like you've obviously uh, worked in the industry. you worked for a while with different technologies, analog up until the digital age. Uh, but you're comfortable in all those settings. You, you're very hands-on, I take it? Yeah, you know, I'm really, uh, I, I, I didn't know much about recording in particular when I started, or guitars or amplifiers or anything. And I think that... The, the further I've gotten into playing, the more I've realized that um, my performances and my music and my recordings get better and better, the more I understand about the technical aspects of the work that I'm doing. So uh, I started off on analog. Back in the day, we had DAT tapes and we had reel-to-reel -reel tapes that weighed about 40 pounds each and were about 400 bucks a piece uh, for 20 minutes or whatever. And uh, now we do mostly everything on Pro Tools. Um, I've worked with radar. I've worked a whole bunch of different uh, processing systems, and uh, uh, feel good about where I've gotten. You know, I finally get to go into the studio these days and, and come out with something that I that I thought I would have. I, I have more ability, I guess, to to come out with what I wanted to have at the beginning. So, it's well, good. I hate to stop you right there. We're going to throw it to a quick break, but we'll continue our conversation with Greg and Rob in the, just after this break here on Rock Talk Show. Welcome back to the Rock Talk Show. Uh, don't forget, we're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, and who knows what else. But uh, we're back in conversation with Greg and Rob. Hey, once again, oh, Phil. shake your hands. We'll shake it again. <laughs> Why not? We're very official here. Um, yeah, every time. We're, we're doing business. Hands. We're talking about the music business. We're trying to talk about all things rock and roll. So we were talking about how you're hands-on with the recording. You see everything from top to bottom, uh, I would imagine. Like, uh, you see it through from the conception of the songwriting to the end product mm -hmm. and getting it off and pressed. I do. I have a lot of responsibilities because I created my own record label yes. as well, but uh, it's, it's uh, my own doing. Like I, I really uh, enjoy being directly involved and doing things myself. And um, Well, you, I mean, you kind of, sorry, you, you kind of right. have to be because you, uh, in my mind, when I start out playing uh, music, I thought, Duh, these guys will take care of it. Someone else will do that. And then all I do is show up and play and then... Right. And it, it's not like that. Eventually, no. you got to do everything, a little bit of everything. Jack of all trades, right? So 
so you have your own label, Disintegration Records. Yes. Disintegration Records. You even have a song by that name. What's with the word disintegration? Uh, you know, I, I was looking for an album title when I put out um, the album previous to this, uh, Disintegration Blues. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, I, I work in community development as my day job. And I think just with my traveling and, and, uh, and my work, uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, interesting uh, dynamics in our in our, our culture and our society you know and how we relate to one another uh, the digital age you know space age and uh, the amount of traveling we're all doing the social fabric that I think I re remembered as a kid is is much different now than it used to be and it seems in my head that things are disintegrating in some ways and I mean devolving or evolving in, in other ways so that's where the record uh, title comes from and the songs I think back that up you know it's a, a lot of songs about uh, you know, uh, disparities between people, um, advantages, disadvantages, uh, relationships and tension and conflict and also hope and, and possibility, so. Yeah, definitely. It's very, it's when you perform, and uh, I've got to ask, you've been touring as a two-piece, Rob and you, uh, like uh, out of necessity or it just is, uh, explain the whole live setup and take us from the studio, like you, you write the songs and how do you, with your producer, you bang out the songs together, you know, the, what's the process? Usually it's me and Rob, you know. Uh, I'll write a lot of songs. Um, I've been writing so many songs over the years as I've gotten more excited about the songwriting, I, I got better at it and it's kind of uh, um, the most exciting aspect of, of what I do is, is uh, the creativity. So writing is something that comes relatively easy to me and uh, you know, I write all the all the tunes. I bring them to Rob. We hammer them out together, and then we go into the studio and we try to capture pretty much what we sound like live in the studio. We don't do a whole lot of production tricks or anything. Yeah. We want to maybe just uh, document what we what we're like, and then maybe do a bit of overdubbing and stuff to get some textures. I totally hear that, and uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I, when I listen to your recordings, it's pretty much like you're in the room. And I think I get that vibe, and that's how you you want to go. That's the vibe you're going for. Yeah, well, but you're you not know, afraid, adverse to production layering. I mean, that is that's always fun, right? It's, it's always hard fun. not to do that stuff sometimes. I think because there's so many options when you get into a studio. I think it's it's more uh, risky sometimes. It feels riskier to do less. So I've been trying to push myself to keep it at a pretty minimal amount of overdubbing because I think that the excitement of of a live performance is much more. Uh, kind of the, at the essence of rock and roll, is yeah. to go in and, and be excited and hear the possibilities. We could hit the wall at any moment, you but, know? Rob, the, like you throw into uh, the drums and it's like what you're hearing on the records, what you're seeing live, and I'm, I think it's very cool, ultra cool, that two guys can pull off this wall of sound live. And it's like, thoughts on that? Like, is that what you're going for when you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I. Um, since playing with Greg, I've, the most important thing that I've learned is to do less in in my playing and playing with other projects. Just you know, I often find that I start when I first hear hear one of Greg's songs, I'll start with the most that I can do. But then, as the the weeks go by and we're working on the song, the finished product is often. Um, very much like the bare bones of the first idea that that was that was there, um, and I think yeah, doing that with a two piece like you both have to be so like your parts have to be so perfect and complementary to each other because there's nothing else out there yeah, to fill no, up the no, spaces exactly, and that's a scary thing. But it, the payoff is like we're talking about touring, less setup, less you know, yeah. less of the baggage that surrounds a big band band setup. But it's true, it's more electric too. I think you know, there's more possibility for us. Like if one of us makes a mistake, it's a train wreck. And I think if you go to a concert or you're, you listen to an album, you want to have that. You want to feel that sense of risk and, and danger and possibility in, in rock and roll music. It may yeah. not be the kind of music that everybody likes, but I really enjoy the the potential for disaster in our music and in a lot of the music that it's I like, listen to. It's like a train rolling down the tracks. Like I get that vibe that uh, it might fall off the tracks, but 
it stays on. It's it's, it's falling off the track. It's, it's falling off, off the track. Tracks. Not well, usually you guys, him, but I, I'm uh, he's technically pretty, good. pretty gifted, and I'm a yep. little bit looser. And uh, but we do, uh, yeah, we've had some we've had some pretty funny moments on stage where we've gone completely off the rails. But I think that's the like I go to see a show and that happens, and it's exciting for me to see how people respond when they're under pressure. You know, oh, it's way sure. more exciting, way more way more sense of uh, of entertainment in a way, but also just of danger. You know. Well, like that is so. Fireball, the, the new album. That's what you get. You're seeing and hearing that vision, and then some people were saying you, too many ballads. Too, you know, this one's straight ahead rocking. Mm -hmm. Is that a conscious effort for yeah. the fans? Well, it wasn't. I, you know, do you I care? didn't do much for the fans. <laughs> I kind of. I, I think if I did, I'd probably be more successful. But I'm. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty conscious myself of just doing a project like that as a as a as a piece of art, you know. Yeah. And for me, it was about trying to uh, just capture energy. And and he and I have been playing together enough that we have so many songs of, of different uh, vibes. And I wanted to just focus on the on the fast rock and energetic yeah. stuff. And we're pretty good at it. And I think live, we really found that those were the we gravitate towards that set more often than not. And so I thought, let's just document that and see what it, uh, what it comes out as. And I'm extremely happy. I'm really proud of this album. I think it's exactly what I wanted to make when we started. In this moment in time kind of yeah. thing. Every album has its own atmosphere or world that it has to live in. Um, but we were uh, talking about how uh, the social media affects things. Uh, the, the reaction of people responding to you through social media, your fans, negative and positive, how does that affect the things you do? Or do you just forge ahead and do what you need to do? Because ultimately, it's who's driving the ship, right? Or yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I try not to read reviews too much. I mean, if someone forwards me a review and that this is a great review, you should read it, I'll check it out. But I don't seek them out because I find that that kind of criticism is generally kind of boring. Uh, most of the writing I've read in journalistic reviews are, are, is pretty bad. Or and cliche or just... Well, it just mill. serves a purpose. They don't really listen to the album that much. And I mean, yeah. I don't write the records for them. I write them for myself. And so, I mean, I like to hear from, from fans or from folks who, who listen to music and uh, who come to shows and feel like they've gotten their money's worth. Like, that, that's nice to hear, you know. But I also feel like there's only a couple of people in the world, Rob, maybe uh, my friend Ted Turner, uh, my buddy Steve Bates, and my brother that I really listen to for their advice. For criticism. On, yeah, advice. I'll listen yeah. very carefully to what they have to say. But otherwise, I, I guess it's pretty selfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, uh, we're going to throw to a clip uh, from a live performance at the Union Station Hall. Union Sound Hall, Union yeah, Sound brand Hall. new venue here Sorry. in Winnipeg. Yeah, so brand new, I don't even know the name. Uh, this is a clip of uh, him performing 1995 here on the Rock Talk Show. Welcome back to the Rock Talk Show. Uh, we're still in conversation with Greg and Rob. Um, we were talking about social media, uh, but uh, you also have experience in the um, film world. You're going to school right now, taking yep. a film. And you had some experience on set in Toronto. Yeah, it's interesting to be here in this television set because I did. I worked for uh, a production company as an art department production assistant, and we did television commercials just to pay the bills. I worked for Statistics Canada, and on the side, I worked on this uh, production company. And you ran to a, a famous captain. Yeah, I, yeah. I did a commercial with with William Shatner, and my job was to blow off a cannon full of mylar confetti in his face. You know, it was. Uh, one of those weight loss commercials or something like that that he was doing. It was very strange, but he, uh, he asked me to call him Bill, which was uh, pretty cool, you know. Bill, well, you're on first name basis. I am on so first name you know, basis with Captain Kirk. Yeah. The guy's done everything. He's, he's sold and who knows what he's done and what he will do. He's a classic. Um, so Rob, film industry, what draw, draw you to that? Because you guys actually shot your own video. We'll talk about that, but... Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't do any filmmaking at school. I'm just in the st study okay. of film. Study of film. Um, it's just, I have this, it causes me a lot of stress to know that I will never be able to read all of the great literature that is that exists. And film is just a much younger art form. Um, and I guess that I feel like I just have a better chance of viewing and studying the things that I that I need to in that in that program. I mean, that's not the only reason that I'm studying film. I love film. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess that's what has kind of made me, like I started in a degree in English literature and now I've decided to also do a major in, in film studies. And I think that's at least part of the reason. It's a new medium, um, all things considered. Yeah, and it's funny that you guys shot a f video for Frequencies? Uh, a song called Force Field. Force yeah. Field, sorry. That's okay. Um, and it was as low tech as you could probably ever get. Uh, yeah. iPhone shot on a smartphone. We were just we had a couple of days off in the mountains, and um, I had kept I kept thinking about the idea of shooting a video myself and doing it for free and just kind of seeing what could happen. And uh, we pulled off on the side of the road in a really scenic area, and we had lots of time to kill. So we set up his drums. <laughs> he let me. I I talked him into it. And he was kind of a little reluctant, but in the end, it turned out pretty good. We used his phone to shoot and my phone to play the song on, and so I'm, uh, you know, I'm basically just aping along to this recording, and he's playing in the background with a bunch of padding on the drums so he doesn't hit it too loud. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. That's control. Like, let's yeah. shoot a music video and let's throw it on YouTube, and before you know it, it's it's happened. Yeah, hundreds of people have seen it somehow. You big know? process of crew and all all that it's just immediate and it's interesting these days because you know it's like that with recording too I think with music you, you end up being able there's a lot more control and, and uh, people have more access to the technology that used to be a little bit more specialized I mean it has a bit of a double-edged sword because on the one hand it opens up access for all of us to be able to contribute and to be part of that conversation you know we can make our own film create our own records on the other hand, I think it's, uh, it has a backhanded effect of having, uh, uh, it allows a lot of people to make music and contribute that maybe sh sh should stay in the basement. You know? Well, yeah, the double-edged <laughs> sword. My, my video uh, might not be the kind of thing that Rob will ever study in his uh, film class, that's for sure. <laughs> Good way to tie that in. Yeah. So, uh, touring, I mean, you've toured a lot. You've had a pretty long career. Uh, I love I love talking about touring because I've done enough of it to know it can get dicey out there. You had a recent experience uh, yeah. in BC. Yeah, you know, we had one of the craziest drives I've ever done. I've been touring a long time, and uh, we drove up from Calgary to Edmonton, which is a short throw. You know, it's a 110, maybe three-hour drive, and it took us about five hours. It was a really bad blizzard, and then we got there, and the snowstorm we got, we played our show. But then uh, a couple days later, when we left to go out west, we had to hit the mountains. And, and halfway into the mountains, our car spun around. And, you know, we had gotten on worse and worse highway as we went, and the snow was getting worse and worse as we drove. So we decided to pull back because, uh, you know, maybe when I was younger and a little more fearless, I might have <laughs> gone for it. But nowadays, I, you know, I want to actually make it home alive. So. Yeah, driving in the mountains, uh, uh, my first experiences of going west is like, uh, why are these roads uh, off to the sides? What's yeah. the deal with that? And the runway know, lanes, the runaway well, lanes. Well, the, 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 what do they call it? The braking lanes. Are, yeah. uh, it's when your brakes give out on your vehicle and you need to like ditch. I'm like, wow, this yeah. is serious. It's, it's uh, like your travel is taking you to around the world. Have you been, like you're originally from, uh, born in uh, Nova Scotia, I believe? Yes, yeah. And so you're based out of Winnipeg now, but you've traveled a lot uh, around Canada. Any places you have been to or want to go to? Or? Well, you know, he and I, like Rob and I, we had a lot of success in Germany and uh, Denmark and a few other countries over on the other side of the pond. And, uh, it's so much fun to tour over there. I mean, I love touring anywhere. I think it's just a gift to be able to jump in a car or, or go somewhere different and have people actually listen to your music. And But yeah, Europe is, is such a pleasure because they really respect the culture of, of art there is a bit uh, more refined, I suppose, in some, in some cases. And they treat musicians really well. The distances between cities is really short. It's yeah, not like driving yeah. to Saskatoon or Calgary, you know? Yeah. And uh, you get to see things every day that are historic and beautiful. You know, the food is great the, the beer is amazing you know so we, we have had uh, some some kind of goal this year I think to go to Europe again maybe once or twice if we can and and do some touring out there because it's so much fun it's, it's tough to get out there you have to you have your life back here your job to balance things you're going to school it's 
but you owe it to your fans to get out there as much as you can, right? Because you got a fan base. And uh, but the, the bonuses you get to see, like you said, the history. I mean, that must be a lot of fun. I've yet to get to the old world and do any kind of playing, but. Uh, it's so pretty fun, yeah. We get, you know, we're so lucky. I think that that's the thing. I don't feel as much pressure. I feel more like I just want to go because it's such a, a gift to get there and, and drive around. And we've had some some things over there go wrong, but you know, ultimately we're li living a pretty charmed existence when we're on tour. Um, sometimes it's hard, but I look back and I think, you know, my gr my grandfather was a coal miner. My other grandfather was a steel worker, and here I am driving around the the English countryside with uh, with him listening to music and we got a flat tire so you know it's not like it's uh, it's so bad the worst case scenario is, is usually quite a bit better than than uh, the day-to-day -day when you're just working a, a nine-to-five job you know so yeah we feel pretty pretty fortunate when we're on tour all right you know time flies uh, in conversation great conversation with you two uh, but we're gonna have to wrap up here and uh, once again thank you for being thank on you, the show Phil. yeah this is cool thank man you. I love your soundstage. Thanks a lot to the camera folks and everybody. We had a blast this half hour with Greg McPherson, and he's going to play us off the show in a second. But I'd like, like to give a big shout out to our crew at the Rock Talk Show and Shaw for putting us on the air. And without further ado, let's throw to Greg with his song Space and Time. Don't worry about a thing. I'll go where you are. Across all space and time will be okay, okay. Oh. Make up our own rules for science and our laws. The days will be our own. We'll live this way forever. 
The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view.